Good evening, welcome back to the channel. We are uh, out to shoot the Milky Way at possibly the worst night of the year. We are here with uh, four people, Corné, Martijn, all, you all know them, and there is uh, Sean, we'll introduce him later. And I think I'm gonna need the data of these guys. And there's also some hints, maybe, of not the cloud. So, let's start. Okay, so we are now setting up our trackers here on the uh, cycling path. We've just uh, yeah, shot some uh, potential foregrounds. Yeah, I said uh, in the introduction uh, that we uh, would try to photograph the Milky Way at the worst time possible, because uh, yeah, it's, uh, it has just been summer solstice, which means uh, yeah, the, it is more or less the uh, longest day, and the sun won't set further than 14 degrees under the horizon. So if we can do it now, we can do it whole year round. And we have various ideas how to tackle that problem of no astro darkness. The first, we are with four people here. So our idea was, what if we just shoot as much data as possible and then combine it into one huge stack so we get as much data as possible. Uh, I don't know if we need it because we made some single shots and the Milky Way, Milky Way was already a bit visible. So maybe it's not needed, but we're going to try. And the second plan is to use an H-alpha filter, not specifically to yeah, bring out the reds of the nebula, but I think I might try to use that as a luminance filter, which enhances hopefully the contrast in our shot. So well, uh, let's set up the tracker and see how that goes. Going more time. Mm -hmm. uh. It's going. It's going fine. So it's uh, it's running now. Uh huh. Star sharp. Lens heater on. Excellent. Instagram is looking good. Twenty millimeters. So, yeah. Twenty millimeters. Yeah. So we're all shooting at 20 millimeters now. Um, we're all running, except Sean is uh, uh, troubleshooting a bit with his uh, ASI ZWO uh, camera. I'll explain later what he's shooting, which is uh, pretty cool. Just for a change, everything was running smooth for now, finally. This is uh, the first result. It's 1 minute ISO 1600 f4 and the Milky Way is way more visible than we expected. Uh, look at this. Let's zoom out. I think I'll let this run and then... Uh, Maybe an H alpha stack later and then uh, I think it will be good. And then all of a sudden our phones were sending push notifications. Uh, the uh, trackers are now uh, running, but uh, our Aurora apps, can you believe it? Midsummer, uh, midsummer night almost and our Aurora apps were telling us we have an 89% of seeing the Aurora if the skies are clear and the skies are clear. <laughs> so, uh, and we have nothing to do because the tracker is running. Yeah, so uh, let's check it out. Who knows, who knows? <laughs> So uh, what are you seeing, Kone? Any northern lights? Uh, no, no, well, not with the naked eye, but my camera is making a very short time lapse of uh, 10 shots of 10 seconds to see if I can see any movement, but on the single shots there wasn't really something to see. Yeah. But yeah, as, as you know, northern lights can change very fast. Yeah, we have a bit of a challenge here because exactly to the north there's a big festival going on. So we do see some green, but it's my mainly green from big ass lasers. <laughs> so uh, unfortunately, no northern lights. Nine, nine, nine. But uh, it doesn't matter because we are we are getting some pretty good Milky Way. So uh, let's get back and uh, change to the H alpha filter. Now I'm going to put in the H alpha filter, which I always love to do, as you know. Mirror lockup is working now. Last time uh, with Orion it wasn't. This makes it a lot easier. It's already done. Thanks, Martijn. This is uh, how the H alpha shots come out. I'm shooting at uh, f4, 6400, 20 millimeters, and uh, exposures of uh, three minutes. 
so yeah i hope i can boost the contrast a bit with this but i'm not sure i need it to be honest but um yeah good as a backup okay so uh, sean is now also running you have never yeah. seen sean can you introduce yourself hi i'm sean uh from katwijk uh, also from katwijk yeah same as kunei uh do astro astrophotography yeah for uh i think some five six years yeah yeah, and, and you're mainly doing deep uh, deep sky, I think. Yeah, deep sky with telescope, uh, everything. Uh, cool. Yeah, I got my uh, ZWO uh, camera with me, but it looks pretty awesome. Yeah, the back <laughs> focus is isn't good, so. Uh, yeah, you were uh, trying to uh, modify your wide-angle lens to put it on that astro camera, right? Yeah. yeah and uh, yeah, right. if the back focus isn't good, it means your lens doesn't get in focus so uh yeah, the stars are uh yeah more st uh, stripes than yeah uh, dots so. so what's your backup plan now uh my nikon is now running on uh, 15 millimeters so uh yeah we see i yeah. see the milky way in the picture so i hope uh, we get some in this uh, nice night cool i yep. hope i can also use his data in our mega stack <laughs> 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 let's see how it goes further uh, this night so yep. far so good Okay, so we are now done shooting. Uh, I think, uh, in my opinion, the Milky Way is way more visible than I expected. I don't know what your experience yeah, is. Yeah, true. Yep. Yeah? Good, Corné. I already well. told you. But it, <laughs> 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 it was, you, but it was an experiment. Yeah. It, was, uh, it was a cool, uh, cool experience. Yes. And uh, Martijn was really skeptical about one or two yeah. months ago, but I heard the most cheering from you I tonight. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. How many times did you shoot now? Uh, 50, 50 minutes 50 or something? Minutes, yeah. 50 minutes, bizarre. Am I still running, so... Uh. Yeah, same here. I'm still running my last H Alpha stack. So yeah, we'll uh, see if we have to combine all our data to get the most out of the shot. I don't think we have to, uh, but I think it will be a nice, uh, a nice experiment. Anyway, uh, I'll let the, the, the guys uh, go home to the far edge of uh, the Netherlands of uh, Katwijk. They have to drive one and a half hours. So uh, we'll sign off here. We are thank you, guys. Go from him. Yeah. <laughs> <Thank> Finally. You. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you guys for watching. See you on the next one. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. But not of course before I show you our results. So let's first start with a, uh, yeah, a single exposure. And this is what a single exposure looks like. Uh, yeah, we have to deal with this uh, uh, light in the Netherlands at this time of year, unfortunately. However, uh, to be totally honest, it isn't that much different than compared to a normal stack when it's astronomical darkness. We have pretty much light pollution anyway. So yeah, this is already turning out better than expected. Totally workable. Uh, but well, yeah, what if I stack all my data together and also add some uh, H-alpha data uh, to boost the luminance for a bit of contrast and a little bit of the reds of the nebula. Uh, and then uh, the RGB data combined uh, 39 minutes, I think, uh, plus uh, H-alpha. This is what I uh, came up with after editing, which I am totally happy about. So uh, yeah, uh, is it possible uh, to make a good Milky Way photo during summer solstice at uh, 52 degrees north? Most definitely. Maybe you get a little bit less contrast, but I think it is super workable and totally worth it already. And uh, Kone also made uh, two shots with his own data. I think he shot uh, about 30 minutes of data. Here is one with uh, Sean. Uh, in the frame and here is one uh, with a landscape composition with a little reeds on the foreground and a tree on the background beautiful stuff uh, Martijn uh, also put himself in the center of attention here with his uh, selfie on the path with the Milky Way behind him and uh, Martijn used I think about 15 minutes of data uh, excellent shots super sharp stars also but I'll come back to that um, and this one is from uh, Sean, uh, especially for a deep scape uh, a photographer. I think it's a pretty good landscape composition here with a really nice balance and yeah, just a really good detailed Milky Way also. Uh, so yeah, we were all happy with these shots at this moment, but we still wondered what would happen if we combine all our data together into one mega stack. So uh, yeah, we have two and a half uh, hours of data in total, which we shot this evening. And um, here is what happened. 
Okay, so what would happen if we combine all our data together, two and a half hours of data? I've uh, had to think this out a bit, how to combine uh, uh, four different cameras, four different lenses. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, Sequator or something is not uh, working uh, this way. It, uh, yeah, so I tried to use PixInsight, uh, weighted batch pre-processing. It did a decent-ish job, but I couldn't get it to work totally. After that, I have uh, checked the Astro Pixel processor, but I have no experience with the program, so I get gave up after about an hour of trying. I'm not saying it's bad software, but I'm yeah just not experienced in it. So I rethought it and okay, let's just do some things I know myself uh, which can work. So uh, yeah, this is basically what I did. Well, first I stacked all our data separately in Sequator as I would normally do. So uh, we get four stacks uh, from uh, all of the guys. Um, then after that I will put those stacked results into uh, PixInsight and uh, as you can see here uh, we have a, a result for me. Um, after that I registered the uh, data over each other with the star alignment process and um, if you do that it uh, yeah, sort of aligns the images together so you can see uh, that there is not a 100% overlap. Um, and here's Sean's result and Martijn's result and if we put this all over each other I've exported these results again and I've made a crop so that uh, we are left with only a 100% uh, overlap picture and um, uh, after that um, yeah um, I thought okay the star alignment still isn't perfect so I have made uh, four starless versions of these uh, four cropped and aligned photos <laughs> yeah and uh, the starless versions I've put back into PixInsight and I have used pixel math uh, to combine uh, all our four shots basically so basically a sort of manual stack uh, which um, uh, was uh, my shot plus Kone shot plus my time plus Sean and then divide it by four so you get a sort of average of our photos so everybody gets an equal weight in our uh, uh, in our final result and uh, yeah then it was a uh, we had a base file to work with and I edited uh, processed it as I normally do within Photoshop. I have made a tutorial uh, about it also almost a year ago, but it's still basically the same. And um, after that I have used the stars from Martijn's shop because they look the sharpest and I put them back and after combining all those data, two and a half hours of data, um, this is the final result. I really like the result. It may be one of my best Milky Way results uh, uh, from the Netherlands I have ever shot to date. From summer solstice, so about the worst time of the year. Uh, but yeah, is it possible? Yes, definitely. Uh, can you get a great shot out of it? Yeah, I think you can. You just need a little bit of extra data and a bit of extra processing maybe to get the maximum results out of this. But uh, yeah, for me, I think this was a super successful experiment. We had some great fun doing it. And uh, I hope you learned something. Uh, if you have any questions, if you have any tips or suggestions also uh, to get this process maybe a bit easier, please let me know in the comments. Uh, for now, again, thank you guys for watching and see you on the next one. Bye bye.